Hi, and welcome to my full in-depth discussion review of Legendborn and Bloodmarked by Tracy Dion. If this is your first time watching a video from me, hi, I'm Monica, and I make bookish content here on YouTube. And if that sounds a little bit interesting to you, please hit subscribe and you can see more future content from me. So I do like to call these type of in-depth videos worth the read because I'm going really in-depth in my thoughts and feelings and how I experience a book series, a book, or an author. And at the end of this video, I do declare if this author or book series is worth your time to invest in. A little disclaimer before I dive into today's video, all my opinions are my opinions and you will have your own personal reading experience and your opinions may vastly differ from mine. But for these videos, I just want to make them for fun and I hope you enjoy them. Today's videos, we're going to be talking about Legendborn and Bloodmarked by Tracy Dion, which I have uploaded two separate reading vlogs and I'll link them up in the eye above and in the description box below. So if you want to watch those reading vlogs, they're full of spoilers, so just fair warning of that. But this video is non-spoilery, so you can keep on watching. A quick summary of what Legendborn is about, we're following 16-year-old Bree Matthews who is attending an early college program on a university campus. And on her first night on campus, she witnesses a flying demon attack. She quickly finds out that there's a secret society of Legendborn comprised of students that hunt down these demons and that Bree's mother has a mysterious connection to the society and with her mother just being passed away a few months ago, Bree decides to then try to join the secret society and find out some answers of her own. So in quick formatting, I'll be going through my overall reading experience. I will be talking about some major themes and going in depth with some characters as well as the romance and the magic, declaring if this book series is worth your time or not. Anyway, let's just get started onto my overall reading experience. Starting off with the setting, we're set on the University of North Carolina campus and I absolutely love this setting. We also get the supernatural, magical, dark academia vibes as well. And some dark academia elements that we do have in this book are the university setting, a possible murder, some supernatural powers, we have attacking demons, and an impending magical war that will involve our characters as well as secret societies as well. I absolutely love the descriptions that the author used to describe the university setting because it's starting right in the fall. So we spend a lot of time in the woods because of the secret society stuff and I really enjoy the entire setting and how everything fit atmospherically. The plot was one that I was really interested in because of Legendborn's popularity but with mention of secret societies as well as magic powers and some romances along the way, I really had a fun time with this entire plot and also there are deeper themes and meanings that we will get into. This leads into me talking about the pacing which was really easy to get into the groove of this book and the rhythm of the writing was really nicely balanced between action and non-action sequences and there's really good fluid and consistent story beats that you don't feel overwhelmed by especially when we go in depth with more of the history of things and how the magic system works. I always like reading about magic systems with this series. I didn't find myself to be overwhelmed and that is a big positive. Also the world building itself with all the lore and history that we are learning of this world was very well handled. I really like the influence of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. There's a familiarity to the story but then we get more supernatural elements tossed in. Overall, my reading experience with these two books were great. This book series does have an addictive quality to them and with all the twists and turns, you just need to keep on reading. Onto some major themes in this book. The first one we'll be covering is kind of a heavy one. It's covering grief, trauma, and the healing journey from those two things. Mainly focusing on Free as the main character in this book. We do see her go through her grief healing journey from her mother's death three months prior from the start of this book. Seeing how she grapples with that type of trauma of losing a parent figure at such a young age through somewhat mysterious circumstances. It's not a pretty healing journey and I don't think grief 
is there is emphasis not just only on Bree's story but as well as some other main characters. They also experience their own types of traumas and they do heal throughout the two books. And I do really like the take on how people react differently to a death in one's life. But eventually um, our characters do learn to have some acceptance in Bree's case with her mother and then some other characters they kind of come to terms with what has happened to them and learning how to overcome their past traumas. I do really think it was handled quite well and then the second theme does discuss racism, discrimination, slavery, and colonialism. Within the setting itself at the campus of the University of North Carolina, there is history of colonialism and we also learn about the unacknowledged slavery past of this university. So that was quite heavy to read about, but we also see Brie herself experience discrimination and write out microaggressions and just flat out racism towards her. And reading through the eyes of Brie who is a black teenager and we do see her in those situations. But I do have to mention that Brie and the friends that she makes along the way, they do stand up for her and Brie also stands up for herself. Although we are set in a fantasy world, we do see true American roots along with the fantastical elements in Brie's story and I really, again, enjoyed how the author crafted that. Third, there's a theme of shadow versus light and typical good versus evil. I love this type of theme in fantasy books. It always brings a type of flavor to the world and the complexities of the world. In this one, we do have an obvious war against the demons and then we have the good guys fighting against the demons. But then there is also the complexities and the multi-layered of each character of on the good side and the bad side. So I really enjoy that type of dynamic. Next, onto the characters and the characters absolutely stole the show for me. There's so many characters that I absolutely loved in this book. And we also have some side characters that I really enjoyed. We have Bree's best friends, Alice, as well as William, the healer in this book. Each character, they have a full backstory so you understand where each character is coming from and it really pulls through with all of their current day actions. First off, we're going to be talking about Bree, our protagonist. She is a 16-year-old black teenager going into that early college program and learning about this huge, mysterious, magical world that she has some quite personal connections to. Brie is defiant, stubborn, and quite observant as well. And she understands that this new magical war that she's been thrown into is quite a dangerous one. With Brie being a protagonist, I absolutely loved her and I really enjoyed how she isn't one to back down and she also makes mistakes along the way. She tries her best to be level-headed and I really liked how there was one scene how her father is her grounding figure and I really liked their interaction. Again, we are reading from Brie's point of view so she is the main driving force between both of the books. In book one Legendborn we do focus on her healing and trauma and her grief experience. In book two Bloodmart it's more or less the same as Legendborn but there is more betrayals, more sacrifice, and more demon attacks on her. So it's quite interesting to see how she develops from right at the beginning of book one and where she is at the end of book two. And I do think there will be a book three because I don't think book two is the end of the series. Brie is more confident in herself and she is able to make her own decisions without much influence from other people. She is really grounding within herself of trusting herself as well. And along the way, Brie does meet some unique individuals and these are including Nick and Salwen. First, Nick is another guiding figure and grounding figure for Brie when she learns about the Legendborn and the Secret Society and all of the magical war stuff. He really goes against the traditions of the Order. He also deals with anger issues from his childhood. Nick is very much the good guy in Bree's life. He is like that staple figure for her when she is trying to figure out what is going on with her mother's death. But we do find out that 
Nick does have a darker side later on in the book. Then we have Cell, who is a very powerful mage. He really loves a good fight and he really loves his powers and he is also angry with a complex past. Cell is more so the chaotic one than Nick is and we see more of his complexity on the surface than Nick shows. With Cell, we do learn more about his background and how he gains more an emotional depth throughout the two books. Honestly, I do prefer Cell over Nick, but there is a lot to talk about this trio's complex relationship and romances. All three of these characters, they have traumatic pasts and that's how I thematically connected them, but then they also connect with each other on a more emotional and forming friendships as well as possible romances. Their relationships with each other develop quite quickly because they're all placed into life-threatening positions. It really shows nicely on the page and how their dynamics first begin and evolve throughout the two books. Just to kind of list off how their relationships are starting, Brie and Nick, they quickly become more than friends. Brie and Cell seem to have a troubling friendship to start and Nick and Cell, they have a long past together and they seem to be rivals. All three of these characters, Brie, Nick, and Cell, they show their development and how their relationships begin to be really complex and multi-layered, which just makes you love them even more because you experience what they are experiencing, whether that be emotional or running away and fighting off demons. But the romances between these three so for Brie, she could either be with Nick or Cell or possibly both. Each romance that Brie does have is built on the common ground of that each party respects each other and also cares very deeply about one another. And of course, I had so much fun reading the development of the romances and let's just say I really enjoyed that birthday scene in book two. <laughs> Onto the magic system. It was really fun to see how the Arthurian legends were we spun and retold in this book. There are layers upon layers of magic in this world and the simple explanation of that is that the source of magic is called either ether or root depending on who is referring to the magic. And I really do think that if this series were to be adapted, the magic would look so good and visually appealing because it uses like bright colors and light, I think, and they have like conjured weapons and unique eye colors. So I really like that when I see those type of visually appealing things in fantasy shows. And the magic in this world is really interwoven into the fabric of the world. It was very easy to learn about and discover the origins of the magic and we learn alongside Brie. There is also a lot of different types of powers, like specialized abilities, and we also have some bloodlines in the mix of magic. Brie herself is also very interconnected to the magic, and that's all I'm gonna say because it's so good how everything is just, you know, some things perfectly line up, yeah. Finally, we reached the end of the video, and I'm just gonna declare Legend Morn and Bud March, worth your time, worth the read. These two books blew me away and I can't wait to get back into this world with hopefully book three, maybe book four. There's a lot of love, action, sacrifice, heartbreak, and betrayal in this series. And I also read these two books within, I think, a week or two given how these two books are massive, with Legend Moon being around 500 pages and then Bloodmark being around 600. I read them so quickly and it didn't feel like it took me that long to get through. Because sometimes with fantasy books, some of them you read so slowly because it just drags. I'm currently reading one that is currently dragging, but I'm almost done. And of course, I highly recommend you to pick up Legend Born if you do want a fast-paced and a fantasy book that does have deeper meaning. That is everything I wanted to say in this video. I hope you enjoyed it and don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and also ring the bell to not miss any future uploads. I hope you all had a wonderful day and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!